Hey, this is Tony here with Salt Strong, and in this video, I want to go over some tips on using topwater lures for inshore fishing. Now, topwater lures can range anything from a plug type of bait that does a walk the dog action on the surface of the lure to a popper uh, style, and then you also have uh, your prop baits that has a, have a prop either on the back or the front or both of the lure, and it helps uh, trigger a reaction strike from those predator fish. So first things first, I want to go over actually rigging this up on your rod. Uh, with top waters, a lot of them tend to come with a split ring attached to the top of the lure. Um, I took them off of these and I always take the split rings off of the top of the lure because that split ring will actually add weight to the lure and cause that lure to nosedive, especially if you're using fluorocarbon leader because uh, fluorocarbon tends to sink a lot more than um, monofilament. And that's why I also recommend using some type of mono leader instead of fluorocarbon when using topwater lures, just because uh, mono doesn't sink as fast as fluorocarbon, so it won't cause that lure to nosedive into the water, and you'll get the most action out of it. Now, along with rigging the lure, um, since you do, or since I do like to take that split ring off, and I hope you uh, start doing that with your lures as well is learn to tie a loop knot. As you can see that loop there acts as a split ring. It gives that lure some freedom so that it can move around and you won't have any issues with the retrieve. As far as the strength of your mono leader, I just go with a standard uh, monofilament. This is 14 pound. If I'm going after redfish or trout, maybe even 15 pound. Then of course, if you're going after snook or tarpon or something uh, a little more tougher, that will most likely uh, cause a lot of abrasion on your line or cut your line, you're obviously going to want to go a little heavier. I'd probably go 30, 40, maybe even 50 pound if you're targeting uh, snook or tarpon. Now another tip for your mono leader when you are using it for um, your topwater lures, you'll notice some lines uh, say they're extra tough or extra abrasion resistant. That would be even better if you can uh, find mono leader like that. They do sell monofilament leader in small rolls as they do with fluorocarbon, but it's a lot cheaper to buy a 300 yard spool. You'll have a lot of line you can play with and you don't have to worry about spending too much money on, on a, a small spool of leader for your top waters. So that pretty much takes care of the rigging part of uh, rigging up your top waters. Also like to mention the color of the leader really doesn't matter, especially when fishing top water because that line is gonna be sitting on top of the water. Fish can't really see it. So you don't really have to worry about that. Same thing with fluorocarbon. Uh, fluorocarbon, I like to use it just because the fish can't see it when it's underwater. However, when it is on the surface of the water, the fish still can't see it. So color preference doesn't really matter. As far as the length, I like to go with uh, about two feet. I'll, I'll sometimes even go less than that just because uh, you don't need much leader on there, just enough to uh, give a little shock absorption when the fish does strike because if you are using braid um, you have very little stretch in your line and you're most likely going to either pull the uh, lure out of the fish's mouth, straighten out your hooks, or just miss the strike completely because of the lack of stretch that braid has. Now the type of rod and reel setup that I like to go with is just a standard artificial setup that I use. I got about a seven foot to a seven and a half foot medium uh, to medium heavy action rod anywhere from a uh, 2,500 to a 4,000 size reel, 10 to 15 pound braid, and again, the leader, that's up to you, but I do recommend going with that mono leader just because it doesn't sink as fast as fluorocarbon and it won't affect the action of the lure. In addition to the length of the rod, that's really gonna depend on what type of vessel you're fishing from because when you are typically retrieving these topwater lures that are plugs and they have that walk the dog action, you're gonna want the uh, rod tip low. So you don't want uh, to be fishing with a seven and a half foot rod from a kayak and you're trying to uh, retrieve that lure. Cause I'll show you here in a second how to properly retrieve these uh, top water lures and your rod tip's gonna be in the water and it's really gonna affect the action of your lure. So you wanna go with a rod that's short enough that it doesn't get in the way when you are retrieving the lure. So if you're on a flats boat or a bay boat and you're a little higher up uh, from the water, you can go with a little bit of a longer rod. You also get a much longer cast using a longer rod. But if you are uh, sitting very low to the water, I would go with a seven foot or even a six and a half foot rod just to get the most out of the action 
and you're not dipping the tip of the rod into the water when you are retrieving the lure. So now we're going to switch over to some other footage. I'm going to show you how to properly retrieve these plug style baits that give you that walk the dog action and also some of the best techniques for retrieving a prop style bait such as the whopper plopper or a um, head end prop bait which are some of the original ones that have the steel blades on the front and the back. So let's go ahead and see that footage. All right, so first I'm going to show you the plug. This is a head and spook junior in the bone color. And I'm going to show you the proper way to get the most out of the action of this lure. As you can see, I got the loop knot on there uh, with the mono leader. I'm just going to cast it out a little bit. All right, now when you retrieve this lure, you want to keep the rod tip low and just make short twitches of the rod tip. If you notice the line, swinging from side to side, that's what you should see. And if you notice the lure, gives a good side to side motion. Now there's a couple uh, different retrieves you can do. You can just do a steady re uh, retrieve like so, where the uh, lure just walks right back to you. You wanna keep an eye on uh, behind the lure to see if a fish is following it. Keep an eye out for a wake. If so, don't uh, adjust your retrieve, just keep a steady retrieve going. Now another good way to retrieve the lure is a twitch and pause. So you do two twitches, pause, three twitches, pause. Just kind of mix up the retrieve to make that lure look like an injured uh, bait fish at the surface of the water. Now sometimes you can get away with uh, twitching the rod tip up but sometimes it's gonna cause a change in the lure's action if you don't get it right. Because your line should be almost making a C whenever you twitch the lure, as I was showing you with the line going side to side. If you hold that rod tip up, it's gonna cause that line to bounce up as opposed to side to side. Now I'll go ahead and show you the prop style bait, such as the Whopper Plopper, has a prop on the back, and if you notice, I didn't use a loop knot for this lure. You don't really have to use a loop knot uh, for these lures that just go in a straight path because they don't have any action from side to side or anything like that. So any of these prop baits or popper type of lures, uh, you don't really need to use a loop knot. You could just put a nice snug knot on there such as a trilene knot. Now there's pretty much two standard ways of retrieving these prop style baits. I'll go ahead and show you. The obvious one is just a steady retrieve keeping the rod tip up, keeping the nose of that lure up, and just creates a lot of bubbles and splash and produces a wake, which helps draw in those fish. Now the next type of retrieve and the most productive that I found uh, when fishing for trout and also snook is a popping type of retrieve, where you pop the rod tip. Get a good pop and splash from that lure, couple pops, pause, couple pops and pause, because the more you can imitate a dying bait fish or an injured bait fish at the surface of the water, which uh, typically creates a lot of commotion, the more likely you're gonna draw a strike. So last but not least, there's an extra tip I wanna tell you when you are using a topwater lure. Sometimes when you are using these lures, you might get a lot of strikes, but they won't hook up. You might get a lot of misses, or you might get some foul hooks and the fish pops off. Now, if you are missing a lot of fish on topwater and they're following the lure, set the rod down and have a backup rod ready with a soft plastic on it. The reason I say this is because they might not commit to this lure because when they get up close to it, they see that uh, it's a piece of plastic, it's got these hooks on it. They might feel uh, one of the hook points when they do go to strike it, but they will come back and keep attacking it if they are aggressive. And it's good to have a um, soft plastic handy on another rod ready to go. That way you can just set your rod down uh, that you are using with the top water and cast your soft plastic out to where that fish was striking and you're most likely gonna hook up with that fish that was attacking the uh, topwater lure because they see something else in the water, they see something different, not what they were striking, so there's a good probability that you will hook up with that fish. Also, if you haven't seen our video on replacing the treble hooks on your uh, hard baits with inline hooks like so, definitely take a look at that because that will uh, definitely help you out if you are fishing in an area with a lot of grass, especially grass that may be floating on the surface of the water or is just below the surface of the water because these treble hooks will rake up that grass 
and you'll come back with a lure full of grass as opposed to one with a single hook because that grass will get onto the hook and just slide off. Also, you can give a good tug on the lure and it'll knock any grass loose when you have these inline hooks on your bait as opposed to these uh, treble hooks that just rake up that grass. So that will wrap up these tips on using topwater lures. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, if you're trying to up your game with fishing and trying to catch more fish, you want to know what the fish are doing, uh, what time of year, what time of day, what's going on with the tides, and how to find these fish effectively, definitely check out our Insider Club. Me and Luke go out, we do insider reports where we really uh, focus on the trends, like I was saying before, what these fish are doing, uh, given the time of year, how to find them, and how to find feeding fish. And you can apply these trends to wherever you may live, not just here in Florida. So if you're interested in that, go to saltstrong.com forward slash insider, and you can apply for that membership. So until then, I'll see you on the next video.